Hello, welcome to another Dev Nation Live. Today, I'm the presenter, I'm your host, I'm Ed Spianaga, because Burr Sutter is on vacation. But you know what's even better than being on a beach in Thailand, having a session about a K-native deep dive with the great Kamesh Sampath. So Kamesh is one of the best speakers and engineers that we have inside Red Hat, and I'm pretty sure you'll be amazed with what he has to present. So Kamesh, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, it's, uh, Hello, everyone uh, from, from other corners of the world. Uh, probably I'm live from Bangalore, um, which is uh, GMT plus five and a half hours close to midnight. Um, today's session, um, I'm going to take, as I was saying, I'm going to talk about Knative. It's a bit of deep dive. Um, uh, I have very less slides to show to you and more demos to show to you. I have three to four demos lined up. Um, with demo guards with me today, so I sh you should be having fun with me today, right? Any questions if you have, please feel to reach out to my email or my Twitter handle here. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And in you can also find the slides uh, in this bit.ly link here uh, uh, on my slides, bit.ly KN serving, from where you can get the um, thing as well, all right? All right. Um, let me see. Yeah. So before we get uh, further into the uh, details about Knative, uh, I want to tell you guys that there are a bunch of resources that's available. Uh, don't worry if you miss my commands on the screen or anything else. So all the GitHub resources that's there on the right side of the things is where you find all the materials. And also, like you can also go to my blog, which is there, uh, which I written a couple of months back before Christmas, uh, on Knative build and Knative serving. All right. So, uh, so before I jump into, I'm not uh, going to go very deep inside Knative. I'm going to touch upon three important building blocks of Knative. Uh, the one which is called a serving, which technically, as the name says, like it serves you. Your request, I mean, making a serverless component gets executed over HTTP or over events, responding to events, etc. One of the important things about this is that they, they scale down to zero, uh, which is which is quite something which is new to the serverless which world, which is where we want to do scale up and down to zero pretty fast. Um, in Kubernetes world, you've heard about that we, we use the scale down using replicas. Uh, here, it is done automatically, so that's a big difference. Uh, with respect to Knative and adhering to the Kubernetes primitives as well. I can also find the uh, the GitHub uh, link, which is the uh, live spec. Uh, still the latest, if I believe right, today what I saw was 0 0.3. That's the release which is going to happen soon with respect to Knative, uh, with serving. Uh, you can go to this link to find more about serving and what it all gives uh, and has in store for you. All right, so before we get further, I want to go show you a quick demo. As I said earlier, so my, this session is going to be full of demos. So let me quickly check to my screen. So uh, I have uh, three basic installations of Knative. One is one is on, done on local mini shift, um, which, is, which is the uh, single node uh, cluster of OpenShift that can run on your laptop uh, or your desktop computers. Um, and I also have uh, one GKE instance uh, where I deployed um, the complete Knative uh, stack here. And I also have one more uh, instance running on cloud, on Google Cloud, where I deployed OpenShift as well. I'm going to shift through three, three, three uh, instances to show you that the commands remain same, everything remains same, so all that the instances are going to be deployed in different consoles as well. Right, just to have a feel of that we can also go hybrid uh, on, on the things, how Knative works as well. Right. So if you're very curious on how uh, it works, how it gets deployed, um, so you can, you can go to this link right on my uh, browser. I think I'm not able to, I can put it on chat. Uh, so if I'm, I'm trying to see if I can blow this up. Um, so that's GitHub uh, link where you can go find out the documentations from where you can install Knative 
an open shift and mini shift, etc. That's how I follow the guides today to do my installation. Um, if you want to see how you want to deploy Knative to other platforms that you might have, uh, I would suggest you that you go to the upstream. Uh, from where you can see how to deploy Knative in the other uh, the platforms as well. I use a similar one like here, what you see on my screen to deploy Knative on Kubernetes GK engine uh, so that you can have different flavors of Kubernetes uh, running Knative for you. All right, so uh, first of all the demos, like this demo is basically show you like deploy a very simple high level program. Uh, and also I'm going to show you like how uh, Knative will do an automatic scale up and scale down for you. Um, so we will just alter some parameters to make sure that it is pretty fast within the time window I have. So I'm right now logging in. Um, as I told you, like uh, these blogs are there as part of the link resources which I shared earlier. So, uh, so let me quickly see what I need to do. I have two uh, different tests, one is on, on Java and one is on Node.js. Pretty, pretty much the same application which says hello world to you. Um, so what I'm going to do is like I'm just going to do Java and then let me quickly build a Docker image for you. Um, let's say MVNW. Um, I'm using Jib uh, for people who are out of Jib, J I B Z, the builder plugin which can which can be used to build Docker images and push it to Excel registries. I'm just doing a, a Jib build right now to do the Docker build of my application. It just packages the application for you and then makes a Docker image, um, which is can be used for you to deploy your first Knative application for you. Why you see this? It gets from uh, the the up, the image that's from uh, GCR.io and then it's loading the Docker daemon to kind of the Docker daemon and we have uh, this particular image we see here. Um, got created for you, right? So dev dot local greeter, so something which is getting created here, all right? Um, so there are multiple strategies uh, to deploy uh, your serverless application. So what I'm going to do is like uh, I just go to cube uh, I have an ls called SK, so I'm just expanding that right now to get pods um, dash w. So see that I'm watching what pods gets uh, deployed right now for you. Right, and then quickly I'll also go to my screen to show you what I have uh, going to do this, right? So uh, let me jump to the service. So this is a typical uh, service YAML, if you will, uh, that deploys your service. A service is a holistic deployment that deploys all the building blocks of Knative. So in this example, don't worry about the internals of it. It still looks like your typical Kubernetes resource, right? And we have an image which says that, uh, okay, this is an image that's going to get deployed and we pass a couple of environment parameters as well. So the syntax looks very close to the Kubernetes service uh, and plus deployment together. Uh, but this is this one uses your CRD, the custom resource definitions, which has a serving k -native dev uh, v1 alpha one, right? So let's quickly deploy this F, -F and then I'll say uh, service.yaml. Go one level up, and then the moment you see this, the deployment starts. Uh, I have cached a few images earlier to save our time, so you'll see one deployment automatically getting created here for you, and then it's up and ready for you to run. Um, so let's say let's get to see as I told you earlier, case analyzed from a Kubernetes, Kubernetes just to save some typing for me. I say get SVC. Uh, I just say KSVC, which is Kubernetes Kubernetes service. You'll see one service getting deployed, and then you also see a, a custom domain name which is given to this. We'll be using this to call this particular service here. So let's see how we call this. So to call the service, uh, I might need to use uh, one more service. Let's do uh, get uh, SVC native ingress uh, gateway FNM STO. It's backed by Istio system. Uh, okay, maybe I missed something. Uh, but okay, let me check. Let's get all the services from uh, SQL system. Maybe I'm, I have some people right there. It's the O, it's the O system. Right. 
So if you see this Canada Wingless kit, I think there is no dash earlier. So and then it's it has a load load balancer. I mean, uh, node port available in three two three eight zero. So that one I'm going to use curl iPhone H. If you remember that the earlier service gave us the uh, name as creator dot example dot com. I'm just going to use this as my host header since I don't have any domain name uh, doing things inside. And then I need to use uh, the mini shift IP, uh, so which is which can be got like mini shift IP zero. There you go, right? So you got the response for your first Canada service just like that. Uh, curl if it has host name, and then you give the actual uh, domain name, which can be controlled as well. We'll do one more interesting thing right here. So let me see if I have this command. Uh, just going to watch the pod here, uh, and then I'm going to uh, tune a bit of parameters here on my Knative side. So I'll just go to uh, my scripts. Okay, and right here, so you can do. And then what the script does is uh, uh, it just alters your uh, one of the uh, internal auto scaling uh, configurations for Knative, which controls when your services has to come down and come up, etc. How long it has to stay before it gets terminated automatically. So uh, this exact thing, uh, you can find more details about this particular config map right here on my screen. So uh, the one which are interested here is like uh, the one right below. Uh, the scale to zero threshold and scale to zero grace period, right? The threshold basically says that how long it has to wait before it goes down. Uh, so, right? And the grace period, like basically, tells okay, if you have incoming requests to your services, it has to wait for that many number of seconds before it can start to terminate your part. So, what I'm going to do right now is like I'm just to bring down this value to 30 seconds and then one minute so that you can quickly see within this time window that. How quickly the service scales up and scales down as well, right? So uh, I, I'm going to end this skip and then say configure scaling. Uh, this is just a script which I wrote, uh, which kind of brings down uh, the pod and then updates the config map and then brings up the pod again. So as you have seen, this this uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, deployment has been there for four minutes. Uh, so probably I would probably might start to shut down in the next uh, fifth minute or so. So let's let me see this. Uh, <clears throat> so wait for the script to complete so that uh, we have things to do scaling. And also I'm also going to show you like how auto scaling automatically happens for you as well. So Knative has a feature by which, like, uh, if I configure a request, right? So, so if the request, it can automatically scale up the pods to serve your request. Um, in in our case, if you remember that, what I have done is that uh, by default, uh, the the container concurrency, how many concurrent requests it can handle, is uh, is technically by default hundred. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to make this to thirty. And so that like if I do, if I go to send 100 requests right, right now, it at least requires a bunch of more parts, more than two parts to serve the request, right? All right, so the, the, the scaling configuration is done. Uh, let's wait for the, the existing parts to go down. And while that goes down, what I'll also show you is that the what uh, script I'm going to run. So I just have a script which says that it goes calls this this particular same URL which we did. Siege is a tool that's used to do concurrency testing with Kubernetes. So I'm going to have a concurrency of 100 users, uh, and then it's going to fire to the same uh, call here right now. What we see here. Right. right so uh, let's see if this guy's goes down uh, in a second. So now let's uh, try to see. Let's play with it to see if that works. So now this guy is already has hundred, so it quickly serves a request because it has hundred requests. So uh, let's see if this this comes down in a second. So uh, 
while this comes down to zero, what I'm going to quickly show you is that I'm going to take you to the Google uh, uh, Compute Engine. So where I'm going to show you, I already have a Knative deployed here. I'm just going to show you how uh, to deploy Knative to an external uh, thing as well, right? So I'm just logging into my uh, Kubernetes cluster in GKE. Let's see if this is not a died yet. So let's wait for some more time. And once you see this, uh, this cloud container cluster, we can try to log into that. It might take a bit of time. I'm just trying to see. Okay. All right. Uh, come on. Ah, we got it. So right now it's got into the uh, cluster right now. So let's quickly close this because I logged into another thing. So I cannot use this one right now. So what I'm going to do is like, I'm just going to do the same uh, thing. Uh, let's see quickly, k um, get parts slash w. And I'm just saying to say k applied ff service dot no. Right, you should see the same deployment starting again here. Um, and then, but this is a node version of the deployment, so it, it's up and running. Let me quickly grab the commands that I need to do here. So I have my head here. The same way we call this, we, if you see this, we have the same service deployed here. Get SVC, KSVC, K native. Uh, so we got the greeter.default.example.com. Here in this case, it's deployed into a namespace called as default. So that's the reason why if you see our URL right here, is changed to default.example.com and then the IP address or the thing. The big advantage with GK is that they already have load balancer deployed. Uh, if you see this uh, services list here on GK, so you'll see the, uh, the services list has the load balancer for Canada Ingress Gateway deployed as load balancer. It's available for you. So uh, you don't need to use a node port right here. So that's one advantage with this. Since I have not configured a load balancer locally for Minishift as well as for my OpenShift instance, which I'm going to show in a second. So you might need to use a node port technique to kind of connect to the server. OK, so let's uh, log back in to see what we have here. Uh, or see login if you new by default. Uh, the credentials for local mini shift is uh, admin admin. To use mini shift IP dollar eight four four three. So I'm logged into my uh, OC, change my project to my project. So let's start our watch again and see. I don't have any part. I think it's still it's still running. So probably it's stuck somewhere. Let's get back to that until it, it gets terminated. So what I'm going to do is I'll just clear clear this off. Clear the lead. So the command to clear this off is same. Service.ml. I'm just using the lead command to see if this gets terminated. Okay, come on, come on. Let's see, get parts. There's no resources there. So, what I'm going to do is like just start deploy the service here. K okay, apply pressure. Let's see if the pods come up. Yes, it's, it's, in, it's initializing state and then it started to run. It's 27 seconds. Okay, let's try to flash our watch command. Let's. This is 36, I think probably uh, I'll try to report this in 10. Maybe 10 seconds so that we know 
this guy is going to come down or not all right so i'm just running out of time i'll just jump to the the other demo right now so uh, if this this not doesn't get shut down like we'll see i have to log into another console here so as i told you uh, uh, let me get back to my slides uh, probably Let me move it from my screen. So, uh, so if you see uh, the bill, the bill takes care of taking it's complete the bill lifecycle of your uh, serverless deployment. For example, in this case, what you see on my screen is the user creates a bill, and it pulls the resources from your GitHub, and then we have something like a bill template. Just imagine it like to be your uh, Jenkins job template kind of stuff. So it takes and the build is kind of uses this template to kind of uh, run multiple steps. Once the steps is done, then what exactly happens is that it pushes the built container to the container registry, and then that the service takes it up and then kind of deploys this. Uh, right now, what you have done in our case, if you remember the previous case, we did a Docker build, and then what we did is after we did the Docker build, we kind of uh, push the image into the registry, and then we kind of deploy the service separately. In this case, what you are going to do is like I'm just going to do a, a service direct deployment, and the service has a reference to the build. And the build out of it automatically for you. So let's uh, quickly take this demo as well here. So I'm just going to go to my build. I'm just going to log to my GCP server. That's an OpenShift deployed here. And then uh, the first thing what I need to do is like, uh, what I do is like I have a template. I need to create a template first. So I'm just uh, I'm just going to do the same command again. He applied a chef templates uh, Java template. template gets created now and then uh, if you see this uh, let me pull this service again the similar similar service what you've seen earlier and then let me come on, come on. okay Java here so uh, what I do here is that I have a build configuration defined, um, and then I say from where I need to pull the resources from, and then come and then bunch of parameters that I pass to my Java builder template. Right? I also use a PVC to kind of store the Maven artifacts, so each and every uh, build of mine is pretty much uh, faster and quicker. Okay. So as usual, we do the uh, watch what what gets created. That shows you there what are the parts that get executed when the build runs. So I'm going to do is uh, just to get out to the root directory. There's no there's not going to be any build. So let me get to the Java directory. So okay, so. Uh, This is a build, right? So, go a build of uh, our directory to the to build blocks. Okay. Um, okay. So let's try that. You see that there's a bunch of um, four init containers that gets created. This is a little bit hacky right now because uh, all the build steps are get created as init containers. Um, and at times, like you might be wondering, like, how do I see the logs? So one of the uh, ways I found out is like using a tool called a scale, which is Kubernetes by scale. This tool is called a scale. And then I can kind of traverse a pattern to see uh, what build gets executed. And then and then lock. The, currently the limitation right now with uh, with Knative build is that in case the build fails, uh, I have to delete and restart it again. So that is getting circumvented by our pipelines, uh, which is the main spec that is getting executed right now as well. And then once the build is done, so you'll see this this automatically creates a container for you. So let's watch that via the console. This is my OpenShift console uh, that's available from the GCP machine for me. So you can also watch this from the GCP as well. Right, okay, come on. And then, this time. Okay, the board gets completed, and then 
you will see the deployment starts right now. And then in a few seconds, we should have the deployment up and running. Right? So let me grab the command that I used to call this curl as well. So you see this this Java K81 OpenShift is right now coming from from this this particular thing. Right. Yeah. All right. I think uh, I have three more minutes left. Probably uh, I might be short of my other demo, which I planned for. Uh, so I'll leave to Edson uh, to see the questions that could be answered for now. be even better if you could be able to answer this one. Uh, Alessandro was asking which of the features being demonstrated are provided by Knative and which of them are provided by Kubernetes? Um, the, uh, the the basic, the features, whatever we showed today, the service is, the, is given by Knative, the route is given by Knative, the configurations is given by Knative. Um, the only thing uh, what Kubernetes gives us is, is, is the platform to run the serverless workloads. Mm -hmm. So, and then like you also use the same uh, same technique, like how we define a service, how do you define a resource, etc. cetera. It going to follow the same YAML structure via the CRDs. So, uh, and then that gets injected inside your uh, Kubernetes to run the show. Mm -hmm. And exploring this, this this question, if people here are new, some people are new to Knative and Kubernetes, why is Knative so important for, for the Kubernetes platform regarding serverless uh, workloads? Okay, that's, a, that's an awesome question. So uh, the whole idea is like, if you've seen, if you've seen the serverless, uh, how it evolved over the period, uh, you will see that there are various platforms which plugs into its own features and then it kind of affects the portability across the platforms. For example, in this case, I showed you that I ran the same code in my local machine, and then I also ran in uh, GKE on Kubernetes uh, engine, and as well as on a GCP on a different cloud with OpenShift. Everywhere I went, I follow the same procedure to build and deploy my serverless workloads. So which, which is something which was quite important from the serverless point of view, because we want to have a standard or a platform where I can run uh, the serverless workload in native Kubernetes way, uh, so that like it, it adheres to all the primitives that Kubernetes gives for us with respect to application orchestration. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam has another question for you. Uh, how much latency should a client expect if a Knative service uh, scales to zero? For example, you scale um, to zero. I'm, personally, I've not seen a, a big latency right now here. Um, at, at least with my with my uh, whatever I measured with my local platform, uh, there is a momentary uh, uh, latency where the service has to come up. Uh, technically, like if if you have if you have your uh, Java services right now as of today, uh, there is a bit of latency for it to come up, uh, which which will soon be mitigated uh, by things like Graal or other kind of stuff. Um, so if you see Node or any kind of uh, Golang or any, any kind of other programming language is used to build your services, they are too fast. And you hardly see any kind of a difference for them to come up and down. Mm -hmm. I think we have time for one question. And um, we have here, when will Knative become a GA feature on OpenShift? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a very nice question. But we just announced that in KubeCon about uh, Canada. But I personally, I don't have any timelines with me on when it's going to be GN or OpenShift. And oh, we might have some one last question here. Uh, so one minute. Any comments on performance under high workload for Canada? Uh, I think there's, I think right up right as of today, I think still the, the specs are maturing. If you see the latest release of Kennedy serving is only 0 0.3. Uh, 
um, definitely there are some performance hiccups. Uh, even I have seen few when I was building these demos uh, these days. Uh, but it should be definitely be optimized when it when it gets mature. All right. Um, uh, I think we are uh, uh, out of time. So first of all, I would like to thank you for watching this right. uh, session, and I would like to thank Kamesh also for this great presentation. And Kamesh said on the slide, uh, um, if you have any questions, you can send an email or tweet to Kamesh. I'm pretty sure he'll be more than happy to answer uh, the questions. And see you on next Definition Live.